This is Hope Today. Thank you for coming along with us for this journey to encouragement and joy. In this program, Pastor Tom Cullen will be leading us to discover how we can persevere in our faith. There are so many ways we can be discouraged and pushed off our path of faith through life. What is the answer? Listen for that answer when Pastor Tom comes a little later in this hour. Once again, here is Mac Wigfield with thoughtful and musical messages in gospel songs. Thank you, Brian. Welcome to Gospel Music on Hope Today. I'm sure you'll find our program interesting today. Let's establish something, shall we, right off the bat, short and sweet, God is Sovereign. Here are the Cassidy Brothers. Sovereign Lord, Sovereign Lord, we exalt your holy name, Sovereign Lord, Creator, Redeemer, the King of kings adore. Let's agree on something else if we can. Life is essentially a climb. It's meant to be. Listen to the Monument Quartet. I don't remember much about my valleys Even though I know I've had my share and many times I've reached the point of triumph But seldom do my thoughts go wandering there Sometimes we mark life's journey in terms of high and low But in between the ups and downs is where we live and grow so day after day, time after time, my mind goes back to the climb. I remember when I looked around, what peace I found in seeing Jesus walking up the jagged slope with me. And I remember took my hand and said someday you'll understand but until then I'm all you'll ever need He's the strength for every journey the joy that lights my way the longer that I live the more I find I may forget about the valleys my But I will remember the climb So often I find comfort in the distance From the valley to the mountaintop reward Many are the blessings I'd be missing If I never traveled with the Lord But I know the taste of mercy And grace without an end And on each and every journey I've walked beside a friend So day I remember when I looked around What peace I found in seeing Jesus Walking up the jagged slope with me And I remember how He took 
In a world where God is in charge, everything has a reason. So just climb. Here are the Kingsmen. Sometimes we find ourselves crying all through the night. With tears falling down like the rain till it's blinding our sight. a trial in our life He will bring us through If you speak to your mountain and it doesn't move just climb Knowing God has an answer better than we have in We're looking back over our lives That we realize He has been leading us all of the time It's a struggle sometimes to surrender But you can know for sure That His ways are high Thanks for joining us on Hope Today. I have a question for you. How do people persevere in their faith? As a pastor, I've met so many seniors who have been faithful Christians all their lives. They've gone through difficulties, trials, wars, pandemics, church splits, personal turmoil, and yet they are still Christian. They still trust who God is and obey what God says. 
How do they do that? When so many of us would have walked away from the faith if we faced half of what they experienced. Stay with us as we study a man who persevered in the faith and has much to teach us. Here's Chris Rice with It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my lot You have taught me to say It is well, it is well with my soul It is well my soul it is well it is well with my soul though Satan should buffet though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well My sin, all the bliss of this glorious thought My sin, not in part, but the whole Is nailed to the cross Stick-to-itiveness. I don't know if it's a word, but I like the sound of it. Stick-to-itiveness. And I like the idea it conveys. The determination to stick to an idea, project, or person. Sadly, it's a quality that many of us lack, especially when it comes to faith. That's why I'm always interested in examples of those who stick to it, who persevere in the faith. 
In the Old Testament book of Joshua, we're given such an example in a man named Caleb. There are at least three instances where he persevered in the faith. The first time is when he was part of the group of 12 chosen by Moses to go scout the new land soon after the Israelites left Egypt. We read about the event in Numbers chapter 13. The 12 go and spy out the land, and they discover that it is indeed amazing. The crops are healthy and abundant, but 10 of the 12 say the people who live there are too powerful. We seem like grasshoppers compared to them. We shouldn't go in, they say. Then Caleb speaks up and says, wait, wait, wait. We should go and take possession of the land. The Lord is with us and we will be able to swallow them up. Do not be afraid of them. When the people hear this, the text tells us, they talked about stoning Caleb, but he never changed his tune in the face of such a threat. He still persisted in believing that God would give the people the land. Wow. Talk about perseverance. How is it with you? Are you beginning to have doubts about God's promises because of the popular voices of the day? Don't listen to those voices. Trust in the word of God and the person of God. He is faithful and he will fulfill his promises to you. Stand fast in the faith and he will not let you down. As Patrick Dobson sings, God is able. If you've ever questioned, if you've ever wondered, if you ever felt like it's just too hard to stand, I'm here to tell you, keep fighting, keep pressing. It's a new beginning, just stick to his plan, cause God is He's made they are yes and amen. There's nothing too big for God. Nothing's too big. He's able. I know He will. I know He will. I know He will. See oh, if you believe, if you really believe, somebody say God. In the Old Testament book of Joshua, we meet a man named Caleb who persevered in the faith. First, he stood firm in the face of persecution. Next, we see him persevere in the midst of waiting. After the people fail to trust God, they have to wander in the desert for 40 years. Caleb is part of that group. Can you imagine? Caleb had to wait and wander in the desert for 40 more years, eating manna every day and listening to the grumbling of his fellow Israelites. For 40 years, he had to wait to enter into the land flowing with milk and honey. How did he persevere? The answer? His perseverance was stimulated by hope. What was his hope? We're told that Moses promised Caleb that the land on which your feet have walked 
will be your inheritance. With that hope firmly rooted in his mind, Caleb kept the faith. And so for you and me, we read in the New Testament book of Colossians, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Clearly, we are to have our minds firmly set on the hope that is before us. I used to have a parishioner who liked to say, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. I understand the sentiment, but I don't agree. Too many of us are so earthly minded that we're no good whatsoever because when the first sign of trouble comes, we give up our faith. Set your mind on things above, and you will persevere in the faith even as you wait for the promises of God. As Jill Phillips sings, set your eyes on the prize. Paul and Silas bound in jail Had no money for their bail Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Though they thought that they Dungeon shook and the chains came on Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Hold on Hold on Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Freedom's name is mighty sweet Your eyes on the prize, hold on. I got my hand on the gospel plow, won't take nothing for my journey now. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Francis R. Havergal is the author of some well-known and favorite hymns still today. She wrote such hymns as Take My Life and Let It Be and Like a River Glorious. Francis was born just before Christmas in 1846. Her father, Reverend William Havergal, was a humble but influential pastor who passionately worked to improve the hymnody of the Anglican Church. He is the composer of the tune Zone, used for the hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. As a child, Frances worried that she was not among the saved. As her mother was dying, she called 11-year-old Frances to her bedside and said, I quote, You are my youngest little girl, and I feel more anxious about you than the rest. I do pray for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. And remember, Nothing but the precious blood of Christ can make you clean 
and lovely in God's sight. End of quote. At the age of 15, Francis found assurance of salvation in Christ and soon began to write poems and hymns to the Lord. Her quick mind, clarion voice, and radiant personality added to her writings soon made her one of the most popular Christian authors in England. In 1877, with her schedule so demanding and physically draining, her doctor strongly suggested that she put her pen down. But inspired by Exodus 32:26, where Moses said to the people, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me, he picked up her pen and wrote the words to this wonderful hymn of commitment and assurance. Listen now to Herbster Trio singing Francis Havergal's hymn, Who is on the Lord's Side. In the Old Testament book of Joshua, we meet a man named Caleb who perseveres in the faith, in the face of persecution, and in the midst of waiting. The third time we witness his perseverance is in chapter 14. There we read that he had to fight alongside the Israelites for another five years before he could receive the land that was promised to him. But it finally came. At the age of 85, Caleb was as strong and vigorous as the day Moses sent him out to scout the land 45 years before. And we read he would drive out the Anakites with the Lord being his help. He persevered. It reminds me of one of my favorite stories about Winston Churchill. In the fall of 1940, World War II was not going well for Great Britain. For 57 consecutive nights, the Germans sent over 200 planes to bomb London. And Winston Churchill could be seen picking through the rubble day after day, encouraging the people. In 1945, 
the Allies won the war and defeated Germany. When VE Day came along, a reporter asked Prime Minister Churchill what he had done during those 57 long nights of bombing, when it was so dark for England. Churchill responded, Each night I retired to my bunker below Piccadilly Square, and there with a desk lamp illuminating a map of Europe, I planned the invasion of Germany. That's faith. That's perseverance. Making plans for victory when the enemy is storming down upon you. Our faith is not in allied forces or any human army or program or human being, but in the great God, creator of all things and redeemer of our souls. It is to him that we focus our attention and with him being our helper, as Caleb said, we will do as he calls us and persevere. Here are the Whites with Keep on the Sunny Side. There's a dark and a troubled side of life, but there's a bright and a sunny side too. Though you meet with the darkness and strife, the sunny side you also may view. Keep on the sunny side, always on. Every day it will brighten all the way If we'll keep on the sunny side of Caleb was a man who persevered in the faith. How did he do that? Well, we've learned that his perseverance was stimulated by hope. He kept his eyes on God and knew his promises well. But there's also this. Whenever you read the story of Caleb, whether in Numbers chapter 14 or Joshua chapter 14, you read the word wholehearted. Six times, Caleb's relationship with God is described as being wholehearted. And there's the key to perseverance, a wholehearted devotion to God. Let me explain. If we're half-hearted in our commitment to God, it means that something else also commands our attention and devotion. 
It could be the things of this world, our job, our family, a sport, our pride, even another God. Sure, we're committed to God, but it's not him alone. We're committed to God and something else. Listen, half-hearted people never persevere in the faith. Why? Because when the other thing that they are committed to is threatened, they cling to it. They try to protect it, preserve it, nurture it at any cost, even if it costs them their faith in God. But people who are devoted to God wholeheartedly are different. When their worldly possessions, job or pride, are threatened, they persevere in the faith. Why? Because they realize that all their worth, their value, their joy is not found in the things of this world, but in God. And nothing can take him away from them. Even death cannot separate them from God when faith is placed in Jesus Christ. Perseverance in the faith is fostered in the life that is wholeheartedly devoted to God. It springs from the truth that a relationship with God is the best thing in this life and nothing can threaten that relationship. Steve Green sings of the faith by which we stand. When storms rage on and earth gives way When waters roar and mountains quake When floods of fear come pounding hard The Spirit moves confirms in us the faith by which we stand the faith that we hold fast quenches every fiery doubt not moved by winds of man we be word is true and trust his mighty power the rock of any hope we have the faith by which we stand the thief would come to kill destroy and plot his joy through the myriad of lies we place our confidence in Christ the faith by which we stand the faith that we hold fast quenches every fiery doubt not moved by winds of man. We believe God's word is true and trust his mighty power. The rock of any hope we have, the faith by which we stand. Our God is faithful through it all our help and strength Emmanuel now until he comes again we will only lean on him the faith by which we stand the faith that we hold fast Trust is my power, the rock of any hope we have, the faith by which we stand, the faith by which we stand.
You're listening to Hope Today. You know, Jesus once told the story about two men. One built their house on sand, and the other built their house on rock. Then, when the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, the house on the sand came crashing down, but the house on the rock stood fast. The point? Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock that is steadfast. Here is Sandra McCracken. I will build my house whether storm or drought on the rock that does not move. I will set my hope in your love, O oh Lord, and your faithfulness will prove you are. Caleb's perseverance sprang from a wholehearted faith in God and was stimulated by the hope that was given to him in the promises of God. And there is this. As you read the story of Caleb in Joshua chapter 14, you get the sense that Caleb thinks that the battle he is about to fight is already won. The enemy is as good as defeated by the living God. And certainly, this is true for the Christian. The Christian is able to persevere in the faith because Jesus Christ has gone on before us. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, meaning Jesus has won the victory. He gave his life as a sacrifice for your sin and mine. He endured the horror of the cross and died. But on the third day, he rose again and now sits enthroned at the right hand of God. Listen. You and I don't need to fight for victory over the difficulties of this world. Jesus has already won the war. We need only to stand firm in the victory that Christ has won. That truth really helps me in my perseverance in the faith. To know that victory is assured as I stand firm in the faith because Jesus has gone on ahead. 
When we stand firm in Christ rather than try hard in self, we're able to persevere. Keith and Kristen Getty testify to our Lord's victory in When Trials Come. When trials come, no longer fear, for in the pain a God draws near to find is our example of perseverance when he knowingly and willingly suffered persecution and death for our personal salvation. Through his Holy Spirit, we receive the strength to persevere and stand firm and resolute in our faith. Thank you, Pastor Tom, for this encouragement. You may want to hear this program or a previous program again. You may want to share a program with a friend. You can do all that by visiting www.lightandlife.ca. Once again, that is the word light, L-I-G-H-T, the letter N, and the word life, L-I-F-E. Through our website, you can send Pastor Tom and our team a note. We would love to hear your story. Hope Today is produced at Straight Path Studio. We look forward to being with you and your friends next time for another program of hope. Until then... Keep looking ahead. Jesus is coming again.